So this is going to be a bit of a dual purpose video and what you see here in front of me is a pair of Furman PL8 Series 2. I like to call them power strips. I think some people call them surge protectors. It's kind of a eh, it's borderline. But um, I want to talk about their biggest flaw and then tear them down and show myself repairing them. So these have built-in lights, which are really nice. But the problem is, also this one's a bad switch, is I think they run them too hot and they're not running a uh, high enough resistance. So you get ones like this where the LEDs burn out. Also, this does have a dirty pot. I'm probably not going to fix that because it's not like you really would be adjusting these in real time. But as you see, the white one on this side is burnt out. And it'll be hard to show on the other one. We'll see if maybe I turn it down. Um, so you'll notice in the middle that white LED it looks a little burnt, a little darker. So like in the one that's not bad, it just looks yellow in the middle. But this one, it's kind of developing a little bit of a black spot. So the lights in these tend to fail. This one... This one's kind of an anomaly. I don't really understand what happened to this one. Something caused the uh, anodization to fail. Um, and I don't believe it's from cleaning because it's not like it's streaky, streaky or anything. It just straight up like started to fade where it was exposed to the environment. Because you'll see that black rectangle towards the middle. There was an asset tag there. Um... And then you'll see some fingerprints that were left by the previous people. And I'm guessing those spots were protected by the oil from people's skin. So whatever this was exposed to didn't eat into the anodization or cause it to, I guess, evaporate off. I don't even know. Kind of weird. But this one also has a bad power switch. So I'm going to be harvesting these for parts. I'm thinking that I'm going to steal stuff out of this one and put it into this one because it's going to be easier to change out these lights than it is to swap the face plates. But I might be mistaken. We'll see. So I'm going to mount this camera, my camera on the tripod and go at it. All right. Well, I'm going to start with the broken one first. Or, well, the more broken one? I don't even know. They're both broken right now. So... <laughs> Getting into these isn't too terrible. You just gotta remove this top cover plate. Unfortunately, the screws they use on these are very weak steel, so I will have to manually um, put these screws back in with the screwdriver so I don't ruin them. So here's the inside of the unit, and it's been a while since I've taken one of these apart, so I forgot how these work. Um, these screws, if memory serves correct, I should be able to just take these screws out, which will let me take out the whole light assembly. Although, oh, no, I will have to take those apart, because I want, want to switch out the lights. So this is the inside, though, of the unit. This little power transformer for the lights because these have support for front and then a back light on like a little gooseneck thingy. And then the centerpiece is the surge protection power filtration. How capable it is? Eh, I don't know. I mean, it's more capable than your normal plug strip, so there is that. But, uh... Yeah, so there's not too much to see on the inside. I think I will try to get a nice zoom in on the board. Probably have to pick it up. Hold it since my tripod's at a weird angle. It's mostly just diodes, capacitors, resistors, and some 
I don't really think that's a transformer. I think it's just a coil. Um, uh, what do they call them in surge suppression use? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not I'm trying to blank on the right word, but um, a choke maybe. I forget. So not too much going on there. I'm not sure what the resistor oh, right there is. Well, it's too heavy for one hand almost. But yeah. Luckily, I haven't seen any of these fail yet internally with this board that I'm aware of. But usually, it's the lights that go bad. So, luckily these lights are reasonably serviceable. Just a matter of removing the little wire coming off. And then, might get in trouble doing this, we'll see. Yeah, that's a number two. I didn't grab a number two bit for my drill, so I'll decide to do it by hand. And I am going to replace both of the lights on the other unit because that other one has a bad center element or the, the white element that is. And this should just slide off. Yeah, just a little ring of plastic stops this from coming all the way out. If I had it in frame, that would probably help. There we go. So then this little whoops comes straight out. And I guess I forgot that the uh, light came out like that. So these are really nice designed. I assume this is uh, extruded aluminum. And then this black piece is just a cap that screws on. But I believe, I believe they have them glued so you can't take them. Oh, nope. Yeah, really nice. There we go. And the screws for the retention plastic basically screw into this LED housing. Realistically, it wouldn't be too hard to replace the LEDs. Let me fix my zoom so it'll focus. They're nothing special. And without looking up a resistor color chart, I can't even tell through the camera. Uh, well, apparently I'm colorblind. <laughs> Maybe if I zoom in a little more and look at through the camera. It's hard to tell. Looks like it's brown, green, red, brown, green, brown, gold. Uh, considering I was an electrician and I used to know the uh, color codes, I should know what that is, but I don't. <laughs> oh man. I remember right gold means it's uh five percent tolerance. <laughs> so that's about as far as that goes. Kinda of hard to remember those things when you don't use them. I think brown is one. So it might be like a thousand ohm resistor maybe. No, one zero green. Yeah. I don't have anything else to look at look it up. So, since I'm recording with my phone, and I don't have a spare phone in my pocket right now. <laughs> and these aren't the only model of uh, Furman power strips that tend to have this problem with the lights. So if you're buying a used one, and you're not confident that the person selling it uh, check the lights it's definitely not a bad idea to ask the seller or you know if you're testing it you, if you can test it in person that's even better if swapping out the potentiometer wasn't more complicated than uh, swapping out these lights I'd probably do that as well but I just don't feel like dealing with that 
also think it would be neat to uh, retrofit one of these. Maybe uh, increase the resistance to a safer amount so the lights aren't burning themselves out. And then put in some RGB in there or something just for the fun of it. <laughs> Make it a party in your rack. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> this might just be silly. Oops, missed a screw. Also, I didn't realize I'm still zoomed in. Boop. Hmm. One thing I do notice here is this uh, little plastic insulation piece. A little more discolored than that one. This is more yellowed, which is interesting. Since the inside of this isn't getting exposed to sunlight. And I don't think, I don't know why those would get too hot. It may have just been a different production run, I suppose, and they used a different uh, manufacturer for the material. But yeah, otherwise, I mean, they're basically the same. Um, there's no obvious visual difference between the two. Zoom back out. Alrighty, well, time to remove the bad lights. I am really happy that they uh, are nice enough to uh, use these little connectors that are replaceable or removable. Unfortunately, I have to get some cutters to cut this zip tie. <laughs> hmm. Considering this is supposed to be my electronics repair room and I'm actually doing electronics repair in here, you'd think I had to have the tools I need to do my job. <laughs> Whoops. Now with these uh, units, if you want to protect your LEDs, when you're not using the lights, I would strongly recommend turning the brightness all the way down. With the next generation of these, I forget the model number. I think it's a PL8C. Uh, I have one. I'm, well, hell, I have some I'm selling, but I also have one I use at home on my own rack. Uh, if memory serves correct, there's a push button function to turn the lights on and off. I would recommend turning the lights off and leaving them off when you're not using them personally. It just seems like they let these lights run a little hotter than they should, and they burn themselves out. It's really been my biggest complaint. I don't know why the switch failed on this one. I think it's just a terrible switch. And I wanted to replace it, but, uh, like, just going, like, on eBay, I think it's going to be, like, $10, $15 for the switch, and it's like, well, I can just wait. I'm, I'm patient. I will just wait for, uh, one that I could steal out of something else. But looks like I need to get some side cutters. Unless I think it's fancy. I could just jam this in here and a little twisty twist. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Now I have to cut that which is going to be fun because I want to try not to nick the wires. So I will be back. Alrighty, well I'm back. Had to roam the whole building to figure out where the side cutters were. <laughs> I put my tools back where, I, where they belong, I'd be able to find them. But that's too much work. Alright, well... I already nicked this on the side, but I don't think I got it through enough. I don't want to cut it um, through the edge because there's so many tiny little wires nearby that I don't want to hit. So I'm going to try to do this a safer route. Probably stab myself in the finger in the process with the screwdriver. I think I'm going to try to cut it more through the top. This is not going to end well. Maybe. All right. I think. Fingers crossed. Gimme, gimme. 
Ouch. Ah, he didn't really do that. Ah. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, this just doesn't want to give up. Also, I'm trying to do it off the side of the tripod. Let's see if I can, he's going to make a mess. There we go. Pretty sure. Yep. Finally got it loose. Well, I don't know where that other little piece of plastic went, but, uh, it looks like it lives inside. Oh, there it is. I was going to say it's a permanent guest. Nope. That's not it. Well, <laughs> just a random little piece of plastic in here now. Come on. Gimme, gimme, gimme. There we go. All right. Well, now I just got to put these in, put it back together, and hopefully uh, get everything lined up correctly. That's going to be the hardest part. But it shouldn't be too bad. All right. Yeah, this part's going to be tricky. All right. Now, hopefully, we can just jam the screw in there. Oops, wrong bit. And screw it in. I forget if I said it or not, but this is for uh, my mobile rack project. Although I don't know where this video is going to come out. So I have a feeling I'm going to get impatient and release the mobile rack project first. <laughs> I'm kind of excited about the project. At least the closer I get to it. Of course, this, if this is in the, after the fact, then uh, <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah. And this one is next. I did point the LEDs up. Yep, good. All right. I do like this design. It's elegant and simple. It does the job. I feel like the only way they could have made it simpler is if, uh, well, yeah, I don't know. Maybe if they would have made this tube out of plastic, I don't think it would have been as nice. Because then if they would have made it out of plastic, they could have injection molded it as one, one assembly with a like snap-on cap and then just feed it through. But... I'm a big fan of metal because in the end, once this thing outlives its purpose, I can turn it into money, unlike plastic. <laughs> All righty. Well, oh, <laughs> I just realized not in frame. I have these pointing the wrong way. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, I don't think I want these pointing up. Oh, man. Um, let's see if I can just twist it in here and have everything work out. There we go. I hear the cats playing in the background. I know what they're doing.
All right. Now the lights are pointing the right direction, at least that one. <laughs> oh boy. There we go. Let's get this one out and a little twisty twist. Oops, I just straighten out. I didn't want to. Oh no. Oh, those lights are pointing the right direction still. <laughs> it's a comedy of errors. There we go. All right. Oops, caught my arm on the tripod. Tripod's literally like right here. <laughs> All right, well, cool. I'm not gonna make you watch me put it back together, but I will show you a finished product. So I do need to be careful and just plugged it in. It's not on, but I believe I believe there is live voltage going through, at least there. I don't know if any of this is actually live when it's uh, not on, to be honest. But if I just avoid touching the naughty bits, I won't get hurt. All right. So hopefully, I mean, it's on. And we'll just slowly turn those up. And yeah, I got a fully functioning set of lights. This pot's kind of annoying, but um, yeah, it's too much work. So hopefully that was interesting. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching.